Yesterday I knitted a swatch using Japanese short rows and it came out okay, but I was not exactly thrilled. So I knitted another 10 swatches until I found a version that looks almost 100% invisible. Can you spot the short rows? Here, this is the other side. Trust me, they are there. Here, this is the wrong side. And even here, they are only faintly visible. And even if you do it here in two colors, it's so invisible that if you wouldn't see this little bump here in the middle, you would think this is actually intaja, but it isn't. It's short row shaping. Isn't this amazing? Hi everyone, Norman here. In this tutorial, I want to show you how I knitted these swatches step by step with super slow repeats and explanations for beginners. I don't necessarily believe in right or wrong in knitting. Do what brings you joy. However, I do believe that there are certain use cases where some techniques just look neater than others. So let's show you how I knitted Japanese short rows to achieve these super invisible results. To start, I want you to knit up to the position where you want to turn around. If you know anything about short rows, you probably know that you will create a double stitch and this last stitch here will turn into your double stitch. Then you turn around and now I want you to slip that first stitch here pearlwise or point to point carefully and then pick up a stitch marker like one of these here and put it around your working arm. And that's already the full trick. Then you can purl across the wrong side. And you can repeat this as often as you like. So let's do that one more time here on the knit side. I will show you the purl side in a second. So you knit up to, I will knit up. So here's a little gap. This is a stitch marker and I will stop two stitches before the gap. If you only step, uh, stop one stitch before the gap, things will turn out slightly visible later on, but you could also do three uh, stitches. Then you turn around and just like before, I only slip this stitch, then I pick up a stitch marker, put it here around, come on, put it here around my working yarn and then continue purling across the wrong side. And as I said, you can continue this for as many times as you like and then it's time to actually resolve the short rows. Once you are done with your short row shaping, we need to knit across one more row using a special technique. So as you can see, we created this well, almost little gusset here. And now we need to knit across to resolve these short row stitches. Well, actually we need to create them. So I will knit up to the position where I stumble across the first stitch marker. Here, see, it's in between those stitches. And all you need to do is you need to pull on the stitch marker here and lift it back to the knitting needle. And you need to lift it back in the way that the leading leg, so this leg here is in front. So you don't need to lift it back like this. Now the leading leg, the leg here is in the back. That's not what you want you want the leading leg in front. Then you remove the stitch marker and simply knit these two stitches here together. Let's do that one more time. So here, can you spot it? Here is our second stitch marker. You lift it back to the knitting needle like so. You remove the stitch marker and then you knit these two stitches together. Fairly simple. I mean, you sometimes have to glance back at your wrong side so you don't accidentally miss the stitch marker, but it should be easy as that. So here I have one last uh, stitch marker and I 
will knit it together with the next stitch as well. And then you can continue knitting across. And then I will show you how to do stitches on the short row stitches on the purl side. To create Japanese short rows on the purl side, you can follow a fairly similar technique. So you knit up to the position where you want to turn around, then you turn around. You bring the yarn to the back, if it isn't already there, and then you slip this stitch here purlwise or point to point. Then you pick up a stitch marker and attach it here to your working yarn. Attach it to the working yarn. And then you knit across in the other direction. So this part here is fairly uh, similar or more or less the same. And it shouldn't be very difficult if you ask me. I mean, let's do it one more time nevertheless. So just like before and here on the wrong side, it's even easier to spot the stitch markers. So here is my gap, here's my stitch marker. So I will stop two stitches before the gap. You could also do three, four or so. Then you turn your work around, bring the yarn to the back, slip this stitch and then attach a stitch marker here. Attach a stitch marker and then you knit across. And again, you may repeat this as often as you like, and then I'll show you how to resolve these uh, stitch markers. So I finished my short row shaping and now I want to resolve these stitch markers. So I knit up to the position where I come across the first stitch marker. Just like before, I pick it up, I pick it up, and slip it back to my knitting needle so the leading leg is in front. Then I can remove the stitch marker. It's done its purpose. And now, before we did knit two together, which is a right leaning decrease, but now we are here on the left side. So we actually need a left leaning decrease. And on the purl side, that is SSP, slip, slip, purl. So we are going to slip this stitch knitwise and slip this stitch knitwise. Then we are going to slip both stitches here back to the knitting needle. And now you need to purl them together through the back loop. Go slowly. This will be tricky. Purl them together through the back loop. Let's do that one more time. So I know this will be tricky. Slip this stitch here back to the knitting needle and remove the stitch marker. And then you need to knit another SSP. Slip one stitch knitwise, slip another stitch knitwise, slip both stitches here back to the knitting needle, and then you purl them together through the back loop. Go slowly, there's no need to hurry, and we'll do it one last time. So slip that back to the knitting needle, remove the stitch marker, and then knit an SSP. SSP is the counterpart to SSK for the wrong side. So it's actually a very neat and helpful decrease, but admittedly a little bit rarer and admittedly a little bit harder to knit. And once you are done, you can continue knitting across and I will do just that and knit across a couple of more rounds and rows and show you the results. So a couple of rows later, this is the result. Isn't this beautiful? Look how seamless this transition is. It's almost invisible. I mean, you added a little bit of fabric there, so it's bound to be somewhat visible. But um, here, this is the wrong side. I'm so in love with the results of these special Japanese short rows. Now, I absolutely don't want to keep the textbook Japanese short row technique from you. So in this case, you knit up to the position where you want to turn around. Then you add a stitch marker just like before, but you do it one stitch earlier. Then you turn around and then you purl in the other direction. Oops, don't knit the stitch marker. 
purl in the other direction. So the difference is that you don't slip a marker. You don't slip a marker. So let's do that one more time. So uh, again, we knit up to the position uh, where we want to turn around. And in this case, I will also keep two stitches here between the gap. Here's my gap, two stitches. Then I add my uh, stitch marker. Come on, stitch marker. I turn around and purl in the other direction. Later on, when it's time to unravel your uh, stitches, you need to do it slightly differently. So you knit the stitch where you attached your stitch marker to. So the stitch marker is here, well, almost on the left. And then you slip the stitch marker back to your knitting needle and you knit it together. And this is the difference. You knit it together with the next stitch. So you knit it together with this stitch, like so. Let's do that one more time. So you knit the stitch where the stitch marker is attached. Then you lift the stitch marker and again, make sure that you will, in this case, it doesn't actually matter all that much, but make sure that it is mounted the right way. If it isn't, it won't be the biggest deal, but still. And then you knit that stitch together. Let's do that one last time. So, ah, the stitch marker got stuck here. Sometimes might happen to you as well. So why not just show this to you? And then you slip this back. This loop here, as you can see, often turns out to be rather small. So go slowly and check that you actually did it the right way. And from here on, you could continue knitting uh, according to your pattern. For the purl side, there actually isn't the difference. So you knit up to the position where you want to turn around. You add your little stitch marker here and then you simply with the stitch marker attached, you knit in the other direction. So this part is exactly the same as on the uh, knit side. So really no big difference. Just let's do one more pass. Uh, so you can see it here on the pearl side. I feel these Japanese short rows are a bit easier because it's very difficult to miss the stitch marker. You purl this last stitch here, then you attach the stitch marker and turn around, bring the yarn to the back. That's also very important. And then you knit in the other direction, just like before. Four, and then you continue doing this for as many times as you like. Once you're done, you need to resolve your short rows and you can do it in a very similar way as before. So you pick up the loop here and slip it back to your knitting needle and you remove the stitch marker. And just like before, here on the purl side, you can't just purl them together. Instead, you need to knit an SSP, slip, slip, purl. Otherwise, this little extra loop will, would end up in front. And that's probably not what you want. And then you purl these two stitches together through the back loop. It's a little bit more difficult, so go slowly. Okay, again. You purl the immediate stitch, lift this leg here, back to the knitting needle, remove the marker, and then you knit an SSP. Slip one, slip two, slip both stitches here, back to the knitting needle, and then purl them together through the back loop. As I said, this is a little bit on the tighter side, so go slowly. This can be fiddly. 
So a couple of rows later, this is the result. I mean, this is also pretty pretty. However, I do feel that the immediate short row stitches are faintly visible. So you have one here, 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 and that's because you don't slip a stitch. So you have one elongated stitch and opposed to that two smaller stitches. And this is faintly visible. Whereas here with the first technique I showed you, it's, I mean, almost seamless. And because you don't have, you slip the stitch and that's why you end up with a slightly more seamless transition. So, but of course, decide for yourself. Now, pretty as this is, you might acknowledge the fact that not all short row shaping is done in one color. I mean, if you knit socks or raise the neck of a sweater, you typically do it in one color, but other projects don't. So I also knitted a swatch using uh, two colors here. This is the well, traditional or textbook method where you don't slip stitches. And see here, I mean, it looks pretty, doesn't it? But here there are individual stitches here scattered around where I would go. Well, this could still be prettier and more seamless. And here, this is the version where I slipped stitches, the first version I showed you. And I mean, isn't this gorgeous? Here, this is the wrong side. You can faintly see the double stitches here. This would be, uh, by comparison, the wrong side of the other swatch. Maybe a faintly neater, but still, I mean, this right side is gorgeous. And I really have to thank uh, Stacy from Very Pink Knits here because she, one of her very old videos really uh, got me on the right track to experiment around here for these uh, turns for the pearl side, uh, which are, I think, just divine. Now there's one last little issue I also want to address. Can you use Japanese short rows to turn a heel? Yes, of course. So imagine, I'm not knitting in the round, but imagine this here would be uh, half of my stitches where I want to turn my heel. So I can knit right here across. So I have 21 stitches here on my needle and I have eight stitches left here on, on this side and then I can just turn around, turn around, slip one stitch, place my marker and knit across. So you can definitely uh, use this to turn a heel as well, but uh, I will show you the results in a second. So four, four. So here again, I uh, purl one stitch, slip around, slip this stitch, place my stitch marker, sorry, place my stitch marker and then I knit across. Of course, when you do it like that, you stumble across your stitch marker here right away. So, uh, you, but just like before, you lift it back to your knitting needle and then you knit it together. The only difference will be that you are actually placing these short rows side by side. So for the typical, um, for the typical short row heel, uh, you won't keep any stitches in between. So this will definitely be a difference. But uh, we'll take a look at how this will look in a second. So here again, you lift the stitch marker back to the knitting needle. But of course, now we need to knit an SSP just like before. So SSP here. As you can see, you can definitely slip these stitches back at the same time, turn around. And uh, you might have noticed that now you don't actually, because you, you are turning so quickly in a row, you don't actually need to close these stitch markers. At least I don't. Um, they don't tend to uh, drop down. 
So it's a little bit less fiddly because closing them, them and opening them right away can be a bit fiddly. But as you can see, uh, you just make these short rows one stitch longer every time. And then you can use this, ouch, that was the tip of that stitch marker. You can make these longer by one stitch uh, in every row and then you can shape a heel. And we'll take a look at the results in a second. So of course you would have to continue doing this for, so I just did two passes here, but of course you would have to continue until you hit the edge. And I will quickly do this and uh, show you the results. So a couple of rows later, this will be the result. This would be the heel. So I will say that it is pretty, but you can see here if you stretch things, there are holes. Well, I mean, this is a smooth and slick cotton yarn, so the holes are bound to be a lot more visible than if you used a somewhat fussy sock uh, wool or so. However, uh, still, they are there. So I would say this, sec this first method of knitting Japanese short rows where you slip the stitch is probably better suitable for shawls, necklines, and other, you know, flat projects where you don't put the short row stitches adjacent to each other. Here, you kind of end up with holes. I mean, they're not horrible as you can see, but still they are there. So I would possibly pick the second method of knitting Japanese short rows for a heel uh, that will be similar to or technically similar the, the same result as knitting German short rows and it's probably the better option for a heel. Anyway that's how to knit Japanese short rows. Please like this video if you enjoyed watching, comment with your feedback and your questions and of course don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss any new videos. Happy knitting and enjoy the rest of your day.